Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Shopkeeper shot dead in Westmoreland. A shop operator was shot dead at his place of business on Mint Road in Grange Hill, Westmoreland, by armed men posing as customers on Tuesday evening. The incident occurred about 5.50 p.m. The deceased man has been identified as 58-year-old Pleat Femmins, otherwise called Stage. Reports from the police are that Fleming was at Bokalok restaurant, his business place, when a motorcycle came up with two men aboard. The men went into the shop and shortly after, loud explosions were heard coming from the direction of the shop. The men were then seen fleeing the scene on the motorcycle. The police were alerted and upon their arrival, Fleming was seen lying on his back inside the shop in a pool of blood. He had what appeared to be multiple gunshot wounds to his upper body. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The Morgan's Bridge police are investigating. Taxi operators in Dumfries St. Thomas protest over bad road conditions. Taxi operators block section of Dumfries in St. Thomas to protest over road conditions. Reporters understand that police officers were at the scene of the protest that has stretched from St. John Street crossing to Dumfries. The protesters have used items such as vehicles, tires and stones to block the roads and are adamant that their concerns should be heard. Trelawney Man Charged for Beating Man with Hammer A 28-year-old Trelawney man has been charged with wounding with intent after he allegedly used a hammer to hit a man on his head. Charge is Roy Griffiths of Hastings District in the parish. Reports are that on Friday, August 12, Griffiths and another man were involved in a fight during which he used a hammer to hit the man on his head. The man reported the lost consciousness and was admitted to hospital for treatment. Griffiths was later arrested and charged. His court date is being arranged. One in custody after gun found in jacket. 50-year-old Michael Salmon, otherwise called Chaplin, a construction subcontractor of Love Lane in Canaan Heights, Clarendon, has been charged with illegal possession of a firearm. The firearm was reportedly seized at his home on Monday, August 22. Reports from the Maypin Police are that about 2.45 p.m., investigations led police officers to carry out an operation at someone's home, when Larson pistol was found inside a jacket in a room. Portland technician shot dead, body partially burnt. A technician was shot and killed by unknown assailants in Above Rock St. Catherine on Tuesday. He has been identified as Richard Hayes, a resident of Pesa Gardens in Portland. Reporters understand that about 4 a.m. on Tuesday, residents heard a barrage of gunfire coming from an unfinished building in the area. The police were alerted and upon their arrival, Haynes' partially burnt body was found under a pile of board. The body also had what appeared to be gunshot wounds. During the processing of the scene, five spent casings were reported recovered. Haynes was reportedly staying at the premises at the time of the incident. The St. Catherine North Police are investigating. Jamaica woman shot dead in Maryland, husband charged with murder. The shooting death of 34-year-old Jaleesa Fairweather in Prince George County, Maryland in the United States has left her family members here devastated. It's shocking to the whole family. It's hard, very hard. Take it from me, the whole family is just, it's hard. One of my daughters, she can't take it, she is just crying like a baby, the woman's uncle, Ronald Nelson said in an interview with reporters. According to a report in the Washington Post, police officers responded to a shooting at a home on Maryland Park Drive in the Capitol Heights about 7.50 a.m. on Sunday, August 21st, and when they arrived, found Fairweather with a gunshot wound, she was taken to hospital where she later died. The report further stated that 37-year-old Arville Dean Fairweather, her husband, has since been taken into custody after initial reports indicated that he pulled the trigger. He has since been charged with first and second degree murder in relation to the incident. It's not something you want to hear. When I hear first, I kept praying that she'd go to the hospital and survive. But when the news came, we found out that she didn't make it. It wasn't easy, said Nelson, a pastor. According to another family member, who requested not to be named, the husband and wife were not living together at the time. The family member claimed that she had gone to meet him on Saturday, only to hear that she had been shot the following morning. Fairweather died leaving three children, 
a 17-year-old son from previous relationship, and two daughters, ages 5 and 4 months, whom she shared with her husband. While the son was already aware of the tragedy, family members were expected to break the news to the 5-year-old daughter by taking her to counseling on Wednesday. They were going to break it little by little to her, as she thought her mother was out, said a relative. The deceased woman's father and her brother have already flown to Maryland to take custody of the children. My brother is taking it hard, very hard. Take it from me, very, very hard. We try to call him every hour or so, even though he has a loss of friends and family members. We have to keep checking up on him. His joy is to be the grandfather there now, cooking for them, making them feel comfortable, said Nelson. Fairweather's mother, he said, is inconsolable. A dental assistant, Fairweather immigrated to the United States when she was 11, but had been a frequent visitor to the island since her adult years. It was during those visits that she met her husband, who hails from Summer Prospect, also in the parish, and eventually got married in 2013, according to Nelson. She came to Jamaica, fell in love, married him, and after returning, fell for him, added Nelson. Nelson said Fairweather was a lively, fun-loving, go-getter, but she was of a strong will. Operation Leviticus Helping to Restore Order to St. Anton's More than 1.5 million worth of perishable and non-perishable items were seized, and 16 people were served summons to appear in court during police operations in St. Anton of Ocheres and Bonestown. The seizures were made under a law enforcement drive launched by the St. Anne Police dubbed Operation Leviticus, which is aimed at restoring law and order in the parish. Providing an update on the initiative, Deputy Superintendent of Police Ryan Gale said during a town sweep in Brownstone on Tuesday that four people were served summons to appear in court and several vehicles and weapons seized. He said the sweep was conducted by the police in partnership with the St. Anne Municipal Corporation. According to Gale, the latest operation was in response to an increase in murders and road crashes in the area. We observe that our murder rate spiked with some 15 murders across four weeks and our road fatalities have increased. Whereas last year, compared to the corresponding period, we were at 18 incidents and 18 fatalities. This year, we moved to 22 accidents and 30 fatalities. So on Tuesday, myself and seven other ranks of the JCF and several members of the Municipal Council decided to conduct the town sweep in Brownstone, explained Gail. He added, we checked the vendors where they were to determine whether or not they were operating in a space and in a way that was consistent with law. Similarly, we had teams monitoring the main corridors to ensure that there was a free flow and movement of traffic. As a result of this activity, there were several seizures of items, exposing goods for sale and vending in error that were not prescribed vending errors. Several offensive weapons were seized, several vehicles searched, person searched, Four persons were summoned to for court, several more to be summoned, however, they have not come to claim their item at the station and the municipal corporation, and the police are working together to have these persons come in for them to be prosecuted for offenses that we have had detected. In an early operation, the police said 12 people served summons to attend court for exposing goods for sale in Ocheras Market. The police also reported that two people were arrested for breaches of the Dangerous Drug Act. Mobe Deputy Mayor comments Trinity Mall for making building disabled-friendly. Deputy Mayor of Montego Bay and Chairman of the Infrastructure Committee of the St. James Municipal Corporation, Councilor Richard Vernon, is commending the management of Trinity Mall for its vision in installing an elevator at the facility to give full access to members of the disabled community. In a release on Tuesday, Councilor Vernon, who also represents the Montego Bay South Division downtown Montego Bay, where the mall is located, said the move by the Trinity Mall's management should be appalled by everyone and emulated by other members of the business community whose buildings are not yet disabled friendly. I am very pleased to see what is happening here at this facility. Some months ago, we at the St. James Municipal Corporation made a policy decision to approve future building plans if they do not include access for persons with disabilities, he said. For the existing buildings, we continue to encourage their owners to take the necessary steps to retrofit them to make them accessible to members of the disabled community. I am very happy that Mr. Lionel Moore has found it necessary in installing this lift, which will give full access to persons with disabilities, Vernon stated while on a tour of the facility.
Councillor Vernon said that going forward, the St. James Municipal Corporation will remain resolute in ensuring that there is adherence to the Building Act and the necessary regulations to protect members of the disabled community. Meanwhile, manager of the mall, Lionel Moore, said the installation of the elevator was a no-brainer in making the building accessible to the clients, some of whom are disabled or other senior citizens who continue to support businesses on the mall. The elevator is something which our clients have been asking for, especially those with disabilities and the senior citizens. I am very happy that we're able to carry out this project which will put the building among the few of many members of the disabled community who have access more stated. The Act was passed in Parliament in October 2014 and the regulation affirmed by the House of Representatives in October 2021. It gives more authority to the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities, which will no longer be a department of the Ministry but a body corporate functioning under the Public Bodies Management Accountability Act. The Disabilities Act aims to ensure that full and effective participation of and inclusion of PWDs in the society. It is in keeping with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, to which Jamaica is a part. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.